We got a crash course on the Byzantine history of Guiding Light from veteran actors Ron Raines, 15 years on the show, Beth Chamberlain, 20 years, Tina Sloan, 26, Grant Alexander, 27. There are these great stretches that the audience will grant you. You're allowed to send a child off at the age of 12 and bring them back uh, six months later fully grown. Or even um, the next day, med school. possibly. Yeah. <laughs> they will accept all those kinds of things. They won't accept if you take a character and write it in a way that is completely inconsistent with what they have come to accept. Tina Sloan's character, for instance. She's the saint of Springfield who survived breast cancer and countless other crises and slipped up just once. One time in the entire history of my 26 years here, I slept with someone who was married to my best friend. And she died as a result of this because she was so upset she drove off a snowy cliff. And people have still not forgiven me, and this was 20 years ago. There are no minor crises in, the, no. in these families. There. No, no. <laughs> Something dramatic always happens at a, at a big dinner, sit, oh, family yes. sitting yes. down, at a wedding, <laughs> at a funeral. Indeed, funeral scenes are commonplace on Guiding Light. What with all the characters who've met mysterious deaths or been written out of the plot or simply succumbed to the good Dr. Bauer's ministrations. For the actors, though, taping this memorial hit home. A requiem, in a way, for the program itself. I'm 54 years old. I will never have a job like this again, ever, mm. in my life. Nothing this steady and this stable and this wonderful. The backstage story of Guiding Light is a rich one. No. No. Ned Holden confesses his love to his adopted sister, Mary Rutledge, in our next dramatic episode. Here on the show's 70th anniversary, the actors recreated the radio version from the 1930s. They see my light in the window, and they need guidance in their lives. The original focus was inspirational, featuring a minister whose guiding light attracted the down and out, the lonely, and the troubled. But does it feel right to you? How could you deceive me like this? Doesn't our marriage mean anything to you? In their heyday on radio, producing soaps was like printing money. It does leaves things fluffy soft, too. They got their name, Soaps, or Washboard Weepers, by delivering the soap maker's dream, a captive audience. Thank you. Women across America stuck at home with the laundry and the kids, but times, they have been changing. They've been going one by one. I worked on a show called The Doctors once. Does anybody remember that? Former network executive and television historian Tim Brooks says the soaps hit their peak in the 1970s when the networks were running 16 of them. The passing of Guiding Light leaves just seven. How come? It's that the world has changed. Uh, the world has turned, so to speak. Afflicting the soaps. <laughs> Women leaving home for the workplace. More and more competition from talk shows and so-called reality TV. And despite the casting of younger actors, a dwindling number of younger viewers willing to sit still for an hour a day. The audience has gotten older, and as the soap operas have attracted more and more 50-plus, 60-plus audience, they've become less attractive to the soap manufacturers. Action! Seeing the handwriting on the wall, Guiding Light's executive producer, Ellen Wheeler, did everything she could to postpone the inevitable. All right, here we go. Quiet, please. She's a whirlwind on the set where time is money. Right. Right. Morning, shut up. Everything's, I have to be everything's tape kind of... You have to actually go <laughs> oh, to real okay. work. Yeah, Hustling no. cast and crew from scene to scene. It's great to work at that speed. And if it was really good, we don't have time to pat ourselves on the back. But if it was really bad, we don't have to think about it either because we've got to move on to the next one. She cut costs by using smaller crews, smaller sets, turning, for instance, a basement storage room at CBS into Springfield's mini mart. You have you no enjoy. idea you, what you're missing. You enjoy it. Yeah. A lot of men try to pick up women in this play. <laughs> Big pickup spot. The writer Jill Laurie Hurst and producer Wheeler knew the end was coming. Accepting it was another matter. We find that we still have so many stories we would love to tell. We have to say goodbye to the characters, and we have to say goodbye to the whole town. We have to say goodbye to each other. Our working relationships are over. That means not just the actors, but the production staff responsible for sorting out the thousands of details involved in doing an hour show Monday through Friday. 
soldiering on through the last few episodes. Did you see the expiration date on that? It's all coming to an end very soon. It's sad. It is sad. Um, the thing that I'm going to miss the most are the people. This is a family. This is my family away from my family. As actor Frank Dacopoulos notes, it's a tight-knit group on screen and off. Yeah. I called you a bitch on the last episode. But we're friends now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Dacopoulos has played the same character, a Springfield cop, for 22 years. I'm really sorry, Miss Shane. I really am. The thousands of actors who've passed through Springfield over the years include Callista Flockhart, Angela Bassett, Hayden Panettiere, Jimmy Smith, Tay Diggs, Allison Janney, and Kevin Bacon, a teen with a drinking problem. Well, I could stop tomorrow if I wanted to. Some amazing people have worked at Guy's Amazing. Right. To be at the end, it puts a lot of fear in your heart. You want to be true to all the things they created and all love and hope that they gave to generations of people. What's that last show going to be like for you people? I think it won't sink in for maybe a month later that we're actually not going back. We're not just light on story right now. <laughs> we're, there is no story to be told. Pass A, take one. Action. We're just all so lucky <laughs> to have each other, yeah. all of us, yeah. right? And so they taped the final TV episode, number 15,762. Add to that roughly 4,000 radio shows, and you get, over the course of the program's life and death, 20,000 snapshots of Springfield. And now, time to look for work. You go out there and do what actors do. They audition, uh, roles come up, and, you know, that's, uh, that's the nature of the beast.